Talk about inflammation a little bit more. You discussed that. Is that do you see that as the, a root cause of so many problems? And then explain exactly what inflammation is in terms of what's going on in our body. So what you're going to see emerging in, in the lay world of health and wellness, uh, and in the traditional medical world too, is this concept of inflammation and its link to the causality for metabolic disease. It's also linked to virtually every chronic disease that I've been able to find in the mm -hmm. literature. Um, my literature search goes back about 15 years, and it seems to be that around the year 2000, more and more was coming into the forefront about inflammation, and it's linked to, to metabolic diseases and other diseases. Uh, inflammation is not the problem. It is a driver for these diseases, but I would argue that the root cause of the disease is that which causes the inflammation. And most of my research and again, I don't do bench research, I study the literature, uh, would suggest that it's this bacterial growth in the body or abnormal bacterial overgrowth that is driving most of the inflammation that is linked to Western metabolic diseases. So it's an immune system phenomena, but the immune system is not the problem. What I'm seeing in the traditional uh, medical world occurring is Doctors, scientists are talking about how do we block inflammation. In my opinion, uh, that's foolish. And if you block inflammation, you will probably kill people. Because our immune system is necessary to protect us and to rebuild our body systems. Mm -hmm. So why don't you look at the, the causes of the inflammation, and then you can help people get robustly well without drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at that a little bit. How do we reduce or prevent inflammation in the first place? So uh, inflammation is driven by stress through the neuroendocrine immune system. Um, inflammation is driven by sleep deprivation because of sleep's role in the neuroendocrine immune system. Uh, from a metabolic disease standpoint, again, going back to that gut biome or the bacteria growing and living within the gut, um, when you feed yourself, you feed everything that lives within you. And there is no place in your body that is without something else growing there, mm -hmm. okay? And so uh, you think about it. So when I feed my child a Pop-Tart, which I don't, but let's just say I did, mm -hmm. um, I'm feeding the bacteria that's living in their gut. And it's just like any ecosystem. If you have 120 acres and you want um, deer on your property, what do you put out there? Corn or things that deer eat. Mm -hmm. If you want wolves, uh, you, know, you put something else out there, right? So you feed your ecosystem what you want to be there. Now, we don't really know what should be growing in our gut, right? Um, sure. But you don't have to know that. What you do is you eat God's food, right? You eat food. So there's food, and then there's food, mm -hmm. and you should eat food. And food is mostly whole, raw, natural state, and minimally cooked. These are things present in nature. This is a very, very simple concept. So you don't have to be a dietitian. You don't have to have sophisticated testing. You don't have to see a metabolic expert. You don't have to take hordes of supplements. You just start by eating what God made. It's what our bodies are designed to work with. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me.